Alright everybody, it's that time and what seems like a really, really long time since the last time I made one of these videos because uh, it was actually a solid five weeks ago, not just, you know, a regular month. It was definitely uh, five Wednesdays ago. Uh, so, it, on that note, it's going to seem like I have a lot of stuff and I do have a lot of stuff, but I also uh, am kind of checking myself uh, for a couple reasons, one of them being that uh, I bought a lot of this stuff on the cheap as usual from a new source to buy games which I keep browsing without even having to leave the house um, just because they're a massive faceless online entity that that prices all their stuff through uh, software and therefore can have you know kind of all over the place stuff and free shipping and free returns and everything um, I'll bring that up when I get to the first game but uh, also uh, basically want to get to this one right away uh, which is finally 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 got my Retro Fighters uh, Brawler 64 controller for the N64, uh, which I pledged to on the Kickstarter. And if you want any indication as to how I feel about it, I've already pledged to get another controller when they're doing the new transparent colors. Um, I'm probably going to go with green, but you can actually do that right now if you seem interested in this. Because everyone uh, who got this controller, including myself, seems to really, really like it. Um, I have it right here. I have used it a couple times for different games. I wouldn't use it for anything that uses the D-pad straight up, but um, it's got a really, really nice control stick. It's got a nice feel. Uh, I'm really, really happy with it, especially for the price that I paid for it, which was $20 on the original Kickstarter backer price. Um, and you are going to have to pay $30 if you weren't an original backer. But uh, this, honestly, this controller is worth $30 anyway. Um, so, yeah. That's my one N64 item. Definitely plug them. Uh, check this controller out. If you've ever been one of those people that I really <laughs> sometimes can't stand that says, N64 controller is so shitty. It has three ha three handles. How am I supposed to handle it? Like, you've never actually played a game with it if you uh, rant, rant. Uh, this, is, this is your solution. Buy one of these controllers and shut up. It's really good. Um... I dropped the box. But anyway, yeah. Definitely grab one of these controllers if it interests you because it's really awesome. Really good controller. Not perfect for everything, like I said, but definitely uh, just build quality and everything like that. Really, really good. Um, so I got a couple things that are just like kind of one off, legitimately one offs. Like, um, first time in a while I've had any like old school like cartridge games to, to do. Um, finally got myself a copy of. Super Mario Return to Dinosaur Land, which is the best uh, Super Mario World hack by far that I've played. Uh, it's really, really good. I played a couple levels of it. Uh, excuse me. It's really, really good. Um, I think this is actually made by the same people, or at least uses the same shells as the ones that we get made uh, from <laughs> JC Retail at the store. I think I think JC Retail actually made this, uh, but I bought it from someone on Instagram because I would have had this already but they're always out of it. So I've never actually gotten the chance to get one, and someone was selling on, selling theirs on Instagram, so I bought it um, for, like, the same price I would have paid for it. Um, so I finally have one of those and came with that cool little sleeve right there. Uh, a Genesis game, uh, Toe Jam and Earl uh, Panic on Funkatron, which I got for less than you usually find it for, so I kind of jumped on it. I, I Just knowing that I haven't bought any... Genesis or or like Super Nintendo really anything like that in a long time. I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna pick this up today for like I think it was like 15 bucks So it wasn't bad um, Some of you probably picked this up really Not that long ago. This is the Nintendo selects new Nintendo selects version of link between worlds which every retailer is uh, making a distinction between the Nintendo selects and the original copies, which has never really happened before, but people are getting really like, well, we have these all these original ones, and then Nintendo made it a select, and we're not changing the price. Uh, so the reason I got this, I kill, I probably still could have waited on it uh, for like used copies of select versions to come up anyway, uh, and the price to go down a little bit because there's now like a a, a whole bunch of Link Between Worlds copies out there. Uh, but what happened was I finally signed up for the Best Buy Gamers Club Unlocked thing, which I never wanted to do because I would have so many uh, subscriptions. I would have my GameStop Elite Pro membership, uh, my Prime membership that I would use for all my pre-orders, and I still do, 
Um, it's up for Smash Brothers because the Best Buy one has extra coupons for ordering Smash Brothers, so I switched my my pre-order to, uh, over to them as soon as I did that, but I found out that the Best Buy one is really, really cheap for the amount of time that you get it for, so it's actually $30 for two years, so 15 bucks a year, which is, is crazy to get 20% off your stuff, so you can either use that to get your new stuff, uh, which it would easily pay for itself, just like Prime does, um, and also the important thing was that uh, I started wanting to do it based on kind of based on another game that I got here, but I didn't actually get that at Best Buy. But what Prime does lately is they're supposed to have, they used to have, uh, if you bought it in the two weeks after a game came out, you'd still get your 20%. And a lot of the stuff that I've been looking at, like Life is Strange Before the Storm, that was the game that I realized that they're not doing that. Um, that's why I wanted to get it. So I had already gotten the Before the Storm and you know, had regretted that, but I, I went in there, and if there's a game that comes out, and I eventually want to pick it up after the after the fact, instead of having to pre-order it, then I can go to Best Buy and get it. So, it's a good uh, option to have. Uh, but, I grabbed this as I walked out after signing signing up for the thing, just so I didn't feel like I walked out and paid $30 for nothing that day. So, I got the 20% off on this, which was a $20 game, so it was 16 bucks. Cool stuff. Um, anyway, moving on through all these games that we have, which I have to really pick up the pace for, but there's a lot of shit to, to talk about otherwise. Um, and you know what? I'm going to talk about this one, and then we am going to bring up this one, because it's the the other thing that's going to have kind of a long-winded thing. Uh, Soul Divide, which is, uh, I think it's Psycho actually made it? But it's one of these like trash-looking games uh, published by XS, in the late PS1, early PS2 era, and but the thing is, it's basically like Castle Shikigami, where it's like shoot 'em up, and like with like swords and stuff and everything. Uh, and I'd held out on getting it for so long, and then I thought about it uh, the other day, and I realized that yes, the price is in fact going up on this because it's a shoot 'em up basically. So I was like, all right, I gotta get this as soon as I can. So I grabbed it because uh, I'd always kind of wanted it, but never pulled the trigger. But realizing that the price is going up because shoot 'em ups are just going up, usually. Had to get that. Uh, which brings me to the one DS game, um, which is this weird UFO published game called Kuropoto Cool Cool Stars. It's just a, a weird little puzzle maze game where you kind of like, I, I guess what you do is you guide the balls out of the maze by like turning the maze around. Um, it's like one of those old little like toy things that you do. But this is the first game of many games uh, over here that I got from a new store that I found on eBay the other day because I was looking for one game in particular and I was just seeing what the prices uh, on eBay were because I, I hadn't seen it lately. Uh, I ended up getting that game for like five bucks and I'll I'll bring it up when I get to that game. It's a Wii game. Uh, but I found this store that they used to be called E-Stocks and some people might know that apparently. Uh, but now they're on uh, they're on eBay. They're called Declutter Store. Uh, D E C L U T T R no E under underscore store uh, and they get DVDs they get uh, some CDs and stuff like that but they also get some video games and it's never usually never like something crazy like hard to get um, but just in general because they use pricing software clearly you'll see some stuff on there that's way overpriced because it's it's never been checked or anything um. But I keep browsing the store because they keep just posting more and more stuff. And every once in a while, uh, you see a new post, uh, a new item that they got. And I'm like, well, that's a really good price for that. I'm going to just jump on that because uh, because it's all free shipping, too. You don't have any real, like, oh, i got to wait until I fill up my card and then make it worth it. No, you can just jump on it and have it. I've ordered, I, I think I've bought, like, three or four things from them this month eventually getting down to just ordering one thing at a time whenever I see something, just because it does. there's no real reason to wait. Um, so this was one of the things, I, I had like this big order first, because I got all this stuff like uh, between like 3 and $6 for stuff that usually is going to be like $10, $12, or just stuff that, you know, just a little bit cheaper, and uh, there was one discount that turned out to be like worthless, uh, so I don't, don't even worry about this, but if you do... There was one discount they were doing that was buy one, get one 15% off. But when all the stuff is like $5, and you have to buy two things just to get 15% off, it's it's $1.50 off of every $10. 
So it's re it really doesn't matter that part of it, but um, and also it was restricted to, to some of their cheaper things that I didn't even see some of the seven eight dollar stuff. So on that note, I was like, well, don't even worry about filling it up or getting a discount or anything like that. Just keep an eye on stuff, keep ordering things when they pop up. Uh, so uh, like three of these Xbox games, these four Xbox games that I have here, I ordered from Declutter Store just because I was like, wow, that's a good price for that. I'll, I'll just grab it. Um, the one that I didn't, I actually, I did find this at a GameStop because I kept an eye on this. Uh, Stubbs the Zombie, Rebel Without a Pulse. Some of these GameStop games, the Toe Jam and Earl was one that was cheaper too. Um, some of these GameStop games, they just have really cheap. And so uh, keep an eye on them and keep an eye on when stores anywhere near you have them because they'll usually be worth going to. I think this, uh, there's a soundtrack download. Yeah, it's it's totally complete in really great shape, and it was like GameStop sells it for like twenty bucks, which is crazy crazy cheap for that game. Um, because I tried it before and I'd never wanted to pay like the forty fifty dollars that it usually goes for, but twenty dollars I'm like absolutely give it to me. Uh, because it's just it's destroy all humans with a weird developer and a weird uh like different uh slightly different feel to it. Uh, the other uh, starting on the other three games, uh, Stake Fortune Fighters, which is trash i know it's trash uh it just interests me so much because it's supposed to be like power stone but i know i've heard from everybody who's played it that it's it's just garbage but uh, this is like three bucks and i was like yeah you know what it's just a weird game that you don't see that much and and when it turns out to be garbage i'll be like well it was garbage that looked like power stone so i'll try it um la rush uh which is the uh the last rush game i think because the cruising one they they did came out on wii but um yeah, L.A. Rush on Xbox. It's supposed to be really good uh, for a Rush game, basically. Um, and Blood Omen 2. Just keep buying Legacy of Kane games and just kind of putting them in the backlog because they're really cool. They're about vampires and everything, and I just I never sit down and play them. But Blood Omen 2 is really cool. Um, and so for 360 games, again, a lot of these came from that store. It's pretty much what I did. Instead of going out to, like, you know, wasting all my time. I just kind of sat on my phone. I was like, oh, throw that in my cart. Uh, Midnight Club, LA Complete. I'm not good at any semi-realistic racing game at all, but for some reason I just really like Midnight Club. Um, just at least for the idea, because I think Rockstar is just like a good company that works really hard. So I have like all the Midnight Club games for, you know, for no good reason, really. <laughs> it's just weird. Um, a game that I hate, Despite the fact that I've never played it, uh, the DMC Dove and May Cry reboot. Um, mechanically sound game, from what I've heard. I just look at it and I go, I hate you. So, I finally uh, picked that up for next to nothing because I hate it. But I have to play it at some point. Uh, Way of the Samurai 3. Um, a really weird, obscure series from UFO and I think BAM. Oh, it's Spike. Spike is the developer, which is really good. Um, so yeah, I, uh, it usually goes for a little bit, uh, like a $15. It's held its value really well because nobody really knows it exists, but, um, cool, like, action adventure series. Uh, this was a really cool one because I'd actually never seen this in person before. And as soon as I saw that it had Res HD on it, I was like, I have to have that. Um, but it's called Cubed and it's a weird three pack, basically, of, uh, Luminous Live. Uh, every Extend Extra, which is, you know, it's a whatever game that I have, I think, on the PSP. Um, but, like I said, Res HD is on there. Never played Res before and always wanted to. So, absolutely, really excited to have that. Again, because I'd never seen it before. Um, more arcadey than Midnight Club, but still, like, I'm not really good at this series. However, uh, Need for Speed The Run kind of caught my interest just because it was sort of, like, scripted like it had a really interesting story to it so out of all the need for speed games on like the 360 era this is the one uh, i had most wanted you of course because it's a wii u game but uh then just wanting this because it's a like a story so that's pretty cool and i think it probably is a little bit more arcadey anyway uh dead rising 2 um used to used to be a, a lot more actually i think it used to hold its value pretty well but i think Capcom has just re-released all the games to death, um, and just the series in general that, uh, I think it's just kind of, like, petered out. So I finally grabbed Dead Rising 2, which I think I tried once before. 
I'm not that great at Dead Rising because uh, a lot like Lost Planet, the, the controls struck me as kind of weird. Um, and actually the setup in the original Dead Rising is is kind of tough too, but uh, Dead, it's always I just like the, the style of it. It's over the top and crazy, so it's good to have. Um, Blazing Angels 2, Secret Missions of World War 2, uh, even if it's a flight sim game, I think this is still a little bit more arcadey. This isn't I.L. Sturmvik or anything like that. However the hell you say that game's name. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of into the idea that like it's a it's a fairly realistic representation of World War II. It's just not a sim type. Um, so these games are those games are decent. So I got that uh, on 360. And you don't see the the, the second one that much either. Um, finally, you capped off getting all the fear games, which I have to pretty much run through at some point, honestly, because I really really like the idea. Um, this one isn't made by Monolith, I don't think. But having played uh, Condemned 2 recently and realizing how good those guys are, uh, I have I love Monolith and I, I want to play all their games pretty much. Uh, so finally got uh, Fear 3. No Orphan uh, Blu-ray combo pack, unfortunately. Uh, just I don't know if anybody's seen that. There's a combo pack with Orphan on Blu-ray and Fear 3 on PS3 just because... I guess they have a similar character in them. Um, this is a game you don't expect to find at 5 Below. Um, usually it's Battleborn. <laughs> and I've been seeing Assassin's Creed 3 on Wii U as well, which bums me out because I paid like $10 for that just because it was on Wii U. But Earth Defense Force 2025 is the only one on D360 I didn't have. And uh, if you've been interested in this game, uh, check your local 5 Below because I was in there, it caught my eye, and I was like, oh shit, Earth Defense Force. And the one I don't have, so yeah, grab that. Take my five dollars, please. Um, I know this game is supposed to be kind of trash, but yeah, I have a Ninja Gaiden Z, um, a really weird, cel shaded, kind of a misstep for a Ninja Gaiden spinoff. But just the fact it has zombies and is like cel shaded, it's like I'll, I'll give it a try just to see what they tried to do with it. I've heard nothing but bad things about it, but <laughs> whatever. Um, Tony Hawk's Proving Ground, not the best Tony Hawk game, but just, uh, I never, I didn't have any next-gen, uh, like, 360-era Tony Hawk games, so I figured uh, grabbing this on the cheap was a, was a good idea, because I, I just had not played them. Uh, and this was a weird one. Um, this is the one of those weird 2K uh, packs that they do with multiple games in it. Uh, I had two of these games already, but I did want to get Mafia 2. And I pulled the trigger on it mostly because it would allow me to get rid of my Darkness 2 and Bioshock 2. I kept my Bar Darkness 2 poster because I love it. Um, I love Darkness, the Darkness and the Darkness 2. They're both fantastic games uh, if you haven't played them. But uh, I was a little bit interested in Mafia 2 and I was like, you know what? The price on this 3-pack is really good and I can save a little bit of space because I can get rid of the other two. So this is the main reason to get that. Uh, I think the saving space thing is the more immediate reward of that, so. Uh, moving on. Uh, I'm going to do Wii, and then we'll just run through. Oh, you know what? I forgot one thing. One Switch game. Penny Punching Princess came yesterday. Haven't played it yet. Looks interesting. I have no opinion on this yet. I just, uh, it's the first Switch game of a lot of Switch games I have pre-ordered for this year. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do Wii, and then I'll run through PS2, 3, 4. Uh, so a lot of a lot of Wii games for compared to usual, uh, a lot of that because to Clutter Store, go go browse that if there's something you've been looking for that you know isn't very expensive. Um, SpongeBob Truth or Square, um, a game that was made long after the uh, the cutoff point for SpongeBob for me, but is made by Heavy Iron Studios, who made Battle for Bikini Bottom and SpongeBob movie game. So I think uh, just the game itself could have a lot of promise. So, Also, this game has different cover, uh, depending on which platform you buy it for, which I think is really interesting. It's just a different like face he's making. So it's kind of cool. Check out the PSP and the 360 stuff. So it's kind of funny to see the different covers. Uh, Skate It on the Wii, which is supposed to work really well. Um, I haven't been like crazy into the Skate games, but I remember playing 3. And I just, I find the concept of it so interesting, and it's supposed to be really well done. And then making it translate to Wii is going to be another step in seeing how it turns out. So. 
Uh, Call of Duty World at War, the one that I played originally on the Wii, actually, and is okay on the Wii. It's totally fine. Uh, I also played Modern Warfare, the original one. I played the shit out of that with the multiplayer. But anyway, uh, I played this one and played multiplayer with it, too. And um, the one thing I was going to say about this is uh, this is one of actually several things you'll notice. I got uh, a game and its sequel on different uh, platforms, mostly because of that declutter store and being like, well, I just want to get it for the cheapest amount possible because I keep buying games. So if I get, you know, this, I got its uh, PS2 companion, which is a totally different campaign, Final Fronts, uh, as well. So it was interesting. I was like, well, the cheapest they have it for is the Wii. I'm just going to grab it on the Wii, especially because I played it on it originally. So I had no problem with that. Uh, so that's cool. I mean, it works. Um, you might might hate the Wii, but it'll be the only Call of Duty I have on the Wii, and it's a good one. Treyarch is just a, a masterful company when it comes to those games. They're the only ones that really matter. Um, Batman the Brave and the Bold video game. Uh, a 2D sort of like weird-looking um, Batman game, uh, a, kind of a surprise to come out at the time it did. I think it came out in, like, 2000, 2007. No, 2010. Uh, yeah, that was what I thought. Uh, but it is made by Way Forward, which is a company. They make Shantae, and they're a great company, even though they made a lot of crap, uh, paying their dues. So I, I always respect them, and am willing to give a try to any of them, even if it was kind of destined to be a crap game. But this is, is supposed to be pretty good. So, it's just weird that it's made in the old uh, cartoony Batman style, comic book Batman style, after Arkham Asylum was already a thing. Uh, a game that I'd wanted for a really long time, except that it would always hold its value steady at $15, and I was like, I can't pay $15 for a game that I'm going to play, and then immediately want to go back to Mario Superstar Baseball. But, uh, again, Declutter Store coming through, uh, I got it for like 7 bucks which is really good. Not a huge risk, but something I wanted to have in my collection because I love Mario Superstar Baseball. And to think, wow, I've never played the Wii one. I was just like, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do 7 bucks on it. That's that's low enough for me. So I still haven't tried it yet, but it's supposed to, it's supposed to be good. It's just I can't imagine wanting to play it with, a, with the Wii remote when I could just play Superstar Baseball. Uh, capping off, finally getting a bunch of Lego games, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, which was the one that I was always like, yeah, I don't need Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm not as into it, but if you think about it, I love pirates, so, why wouldn't I get Pirates of the Caribbean? But, just the movies, like, it's so weird that how much I love pirates and stuff, but never really care that much about Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, SSX Blur, which is, I, I just love SSX, even though I never really play it, except for... Uh, Tricky, I never played outside of Tricky and 3, so I have on tour, you know what, I didn't, <laughs> I only had one other game anyway, so I, I had on tour and, and I haven't played it yet, now I have Blur and I haven't played it yet, but I just, I love SSX, it's a great series, and you'll see more of that coming up. Um, this is the game that I was looking for originally when I stumbled onto this store, and they were selling it for like 4 50 which is crazy cheap. I think it realistically would be like a $10, $15 game, even if someone's just like getting rid of all their Wii stuff on eBay. Uh, so getting Trauma Center New Blood to go with uh, Second Opinion was a big deal for me because I love Trauma Center, even though I only played a little bit of one of them. But just the fact it's a big story-based thing, really interesting thing to do on the Wii slash DS. Cool stuff. Um... And finally for the Wii Heavenly Guardian, I, I actually kind of wanted to get this for PS2 for a long time, but I just said kind of fuck it, like, because again, it was like, it was like five bucks. Um, it's basically a top-down um, shoot-em-up, uh, sort of like a 360-degree shooter, um, which again, I thought I pretty much figured would be better on PS2, but I don't know if they fully implemented the like two sticks thing. Um, it reminds me a lot of Pocky and Rocky or slash Kiki, Kai Kai, whatever you call it. Um, that's the one it most closely resembles, but it's not really have anything to do with Taito. Just a game that like looks like trash, but actually, because it's made by UFO. But <laughs> I've, I've had like three games made by, published by UFO already, so what am I, who am I to call them out? Um, a couple of PS2 games, I think all of these, no, all but one of these, which is this one. 
Um, finally pulled the trigger and got Sophie uh, Lost Planet on PS2 by Treasure. Like, how did I go this long and not buy the game that's made by Treasure and published by Working Designs? Probably has to do with the fact that on PS2, Working Designs didn't have much to work with as far as making all the stuff look really nice. But look at how shiny everything is. Um, and it's not the best. It's not the best game Treasure's ever made, but it's still it's still solid. It's a shoot 'em up. So, yeah. Still can be Lost Planet, great game. Not their best, but good game. Definitely something I should have. Uh, Wipeout Fusion, good Wipeout game. Uh, I don't really have that much to say about it. Um, it's one of the ones that's, that's published by BAM, which is weird to me, because it should be... Like, I think of Wipeout and I think of Sony, and then you realize that, well, it's also been on the N64, uh, and then it's been passed around to these different publishers, like BAM and Psygnosis and everything. So it's really not Sony's thing, it's just kind of done like a weird circle thing back to them because they just did the the 2048 collection which that might be on I, I don't know that much about wipeout but i know they're good and i know i should pick them up if i see them cheap so uh and as i mentioned call of duty world of war final fronts which i like because i like the story in world of war original so much even though this isn't made by treyarch it's actually developed by rebellion who do sniper elite i think sniper elite yeah and a couple other things rogue trooper um, because it is a World of War story, a World at War story, I was, I was like, I want to play that one too. Um, the first of now, what is now two, uh, a two game series of Pac-Man party games, and it's not great, I know it's not great or anything like that, but it's just interesting that you have a party game in Pac-Man Fever, uh, that also features Heihachi and Astaroth. <laughs> That's probably the one thing that's like always really struck me about it. It's like, uh, so it's only like six characters: Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Raiko from Ridge Racer, Astaroth from Soul Calibur, Tiger, and Heihachi from Tekken. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that stacks up to fucking Mario Party. But, uh, and finally, I, I just at least wanted to have the first three of them. I grabbed finally grabbed Onimusha too. So I had Genma Onimusha, which is the upgraded. Uh, original one on Xbox, and then had Onimusha 3 with John Renault for a while. So now I have the first three. I don't really care that much about Dawn of Dreams or uh, or the fighting game, but they should bring that series back. That's one of the main ones that I always bring up. Say, Capcom, like, what the hell are you doing? Why haven't you made an Onimusha game? It's because they have Sengoku Basara, which in Japan makes a lot of money for them, I guess. Um, on to PS3, which is quite a few games. Uh... Star Wars Force Unleashed 2, I actually just finally played Force Unleashed 1, mostly because of a game that uh, I got for PS4, which you might already know what it is, and I hated it, and I wanted to die. Um, started playing other Star Wars games, so started playing the PS2 version of Force Unleashed that I had, it was alright, but got Force Unleashed 2 just to make sure I complete that. Um, Dead Rising 2 off the record, like I said. Got Dead Rising 2 on 360, got off the record on PS3 just because it was the one that was available. Um, whatever I said about Dead Rising 2 pretty much applies to the, the spinoff too. And again, uh, Blazing Angels 1 because I got Blazing Angels 2. Uh, oh, two games that I've always been really interested in, and I don't have the first one. The first one I think is only on 360. But uh, when everyone's all crazy about uh, Red Dead Redemption, which is basically a big open game that I have don't have the focus for, and I've tried multiple times, I'm like, this Call of War is where <laughs> series looks really cool. Um, apparently this one is in modern times, and I bought that, and I was like, well, maybe I don't want to play that one, but I do kind of want to play this one, which is the second one, uh, Bound in Blood. Uh, just, I like, I like the idea of a western, like, dramatic story, but uh, Red Dead Redemption hasn't been able to grab me, and I'm mad about that with myself. But <laughs> I'll try Call of War and be, I like Gun. Gun is cool. I should play Red Dead Revolver. It's probably not as open, so I won't get lost. Uh, the I don't know what word I'm looking for, but the uh, the lesser cousin of NBA Street, NBA Ballers, chosen one. Uh, they both had their last uh, last entry on the PS3 360 era, and they probably could have kept going. This one would have been the one I'd choose to die. It has its moments, but it's also a completely different, like, idea anyway. More like one-on-one -on -one basketball. Uh, Brothers in Arms 
Hell's Highway. Um, I'm not great at the Brothers in Arms games because I'm not good at telling the AI what to do. But I always thought this one this one looked really good. I really like Gearbox. Um, even if they... I, when I was saying, like, like Battleborn earlier, like, Battleborn ended up at 5 below. I was like, guys, what were you doing with Battleborn? You know, I like Gearbox. Uh, they're a good company. Borderlands is brilliant, so... I've also been playing Fortnite, and I kind of hate it, but I keep playing it because my friends play it. I don't have a thing to show you that I play Fortnite, so... I play Fortnite now. Uh, but anyway, Brothers in Arms, Hell's Highway, whatever. It's a first-person shooter. It's a World War II thing. It interests me. Ooh, and here's a good one. Uh, Copernicus Quartz, awesomely epic 3D adventure through time and space. Co-starring, but not important in any way, Ratchet and Clank. By which I mean it's Ratchet and Clank all for one. Which, I can't imagine not wanting to flip the, the cover artwork to this side, honestly. How do you not put that on your shelf like that? Especially because it still says Ratchet and Clank all for one on the spine. Um... No, this is not the the best Ratchet and Clank on the PS3. I know that it's probably by far the worst one, but I didn't have it, uh, and I'll buy any Ratchet and Clank. I'm still missing three PS3 Ratchet and Clanks. Uh, and again, another sequel or another game in a series, SSX on PS3, which is supposed to be fantastic. Um, and I'm surprised that they haven't made another one since, because this one I, I don't know how well it sold, but it's supposed to be really, really good. Uh, so I was, I, I only recently thought about it, I was like, why haven't I bought this one yet? Because I love SSX. So I bought that, I'm really looking forward to actually playing that, because I'll find out, uh, if it's actually as good as people say. It's, it's not going to be tricky, but, because it's tricky to rock around, but, you know, SSX on PS3 is supposed to be good. Uh, and finally, the last of this series that I didn't have yet, uh, so I think I pretty much have everything from... The new one, because I'm a crazy person now, who is obsessed with wrestling and buying all the games. Finally got uh, 2011. Not a great year for the company, 2010. Not by a long shot, but this has a really interesting Road to WrestleMania mode in it, so I figure it'd be good to do something real quick. Maybe I don't. Um, and finally, get down to PS4. Um, there's two games in here that you guys might see at GameStops real cheap. And I picked them up just because they look interesting, and I know I'm not expecting that much. This one in particular, Area, which has some pretty bad reviews, but when you get it as, as cheap, it's like, it's a dungeon crawler that, it has, it's all about music, too. It looks like, like it'd be really interesting. So, whatever, that's probably not great, but, um, this one might be cool. Um, in a world last wind monk, there's, it's one of a bunch of games now that I have that are like adventure games, a type of game I really, really like, and I would really like to actually have the motivation to go and play them, but I'm just, I'm cool to have it on my shelf, because it looks cool. I love the art style there, too. Um, the game, I hate this game, I'm so mad about it. It does have some redeeming qualities, uh, the bots mode, the, the challenges mode, is the reason I'm gonna hold on to it and still play it. But as soon as they said they fixed it, I was like, cool, now I'm interested in buying it. And even with that, it's like, uh, I hate it. I really don't like this game, except for that one part, which is not the, the main part of the game. The arcade mode with the bots is actually still uh, somewhat interesting. But it's just a mess. It's a mess of a game. The campaign is terrible. It's so short and, and really bad. And the story is so uninteresting and predictable. And I have really no nice things to say about it other than the arcade mode is, is replayable and, and worth hanging on to for. But, man, it's it's not fun. Uh, Knowledge is Power, which was on sale uh, for 5 bucks. I don't know what's up with Sony. I, I mean, I think these PlayLink games are a great idea. Jackbox is doing really well with them. I don't know why nobody, nobody bought into them. I, I bought Hidden Agenda when it came out because I thought it looked really cool. I still haven't played it yet, but that's kind of my own fault. And now Knowledge is Power, when it's on sale brand new for 5 bucks, I'm like, I'm going to get it if I ever play it. I don't know. Poor Sony. I feel bad for, for that, honestly. Um, Battlefield Hardline, which is a game I, I kind of... Uh, it's, it's the only PS4 game so far that I bought on that declutter store. 
Um, and I was just interested in it as long as you don't have to be good cop. As long as it's that, as long as it's an actual interesting police drama, I'm kind of interested for the story. I don't expect anything great. I like that it's visceral. Um, right before they died, I guess. I don't actually know the timeline on that. But I hadn't really thought about it, and then I noticed it's visceral. Uh, Visceral's name is on the game, and I'm like, oh shit, I love Visceral. They made Dead Space, they made Dante's Inferno. Like, did they fuck it up that bad? I don't know. And finally, uh, big box collector's edition, limited edition, whatever the hell, of Life is Strange Before the Storm. I love the first one. This one, I already played it. I already cried. I already reviewed it. My god, I, I just... I'm so impressed that a different company, Deck 9, actually had to take over for Don't Nod, who made the original game, and still got it so right. Play this game, seriously. If you like story mode, if you like a good story in your games, this is a great game. It was destined to not be as good as the first one because it wasn't given as much time, and because it's a prequel. But, man, I've already played this. I'm so glad that, that I grabbed this. Uh, even though I didn't pre-order it, which was the whole... Set the whole thing in motion to go and get the Gamers Club thing and and whatever. But, yeah. And I love this big box. It's really nice. It has a soundtrack and an art book in it. Um, really, really good. And that's the last game. Uh, so, wow. Was, I got through it kind of quick, but it was still a lot of stuff. Um, so, anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'm still playing NFL Blitz. Uh, which I just uploaded this afternoon, earlier. Uh, keep an eye out on that. I got nothing else. Alright. Bye. Check out that store. It's uh, You might find something decent in there.